I'm a mechanical engineer and I'm going to be answering the internet's most asked questions about engineering. 1. Can engineering students use Macs? Yes, for the most part, there are certain software that don't work on Macs, like SolidWorks for example, but there's ways around it by running Windows on your Mac using Parallels for example. I personally did that and I used a MacBook for my entire engineering undergrad. Although it can be a little bit expensive, it's definitely powerful enough to handle anything you throw at it. Can engineering make you rich? Well, it depends on how you define rich and what you choose to do with your degree. You can get a job at a big tech company like Apple with a starting salary of maybe 120k or 130k per year and then work your way up to VP or senior director and make half a million dollars a year. That's a lot because that'll make you the top 1% of US earners. Or you could build your own product or start your own business and then sell that for 50 million dollars which will technically make you rich. Or the third thing that most people end up doing is get an average 9 to 5 job with maybe a starting salary of 80 or 90k per year and then work your way up to getting to a salary of maybe 120, 150k or even 200k per year if you're lucky after decades of work. That being said, our generation is slightly different than our parents' generation as in we don't have to just do one thing to make a living. You can be an engineer and then have side hustles on the side that make you money. Like you can have an engineering job, save that money, buy your first property and then rent it out and use that as additional income that you could be making. Or maybe start a clothing business on the side. So to answer the question, most people won't become rich just from becoming an engineer. That's why you usually have to do additional things on the side. Can engineering be self-taught? 100% it can be self-taught. But most people don't because as humans, we need that sense of accountability. If you don't have someone pushing you to learn something or to finish an assignment, you most likely won't end up doing it. But if you really want to teach yourself software engineering, for example, start by learning how to code and then look into data structures and algorithms. You can find all that stuff online. And if you want to teach yourself mechanical engineering, start by learning how to CAD, then look into understanding the fundamentals of material science, manufacturing, and mechanics or physics. Can engineering majors study abroad? Yeah, for sure. If you can find somewhere that won't delay your graduation, then go for it. Tamir Shaheen. But if you can't, then you can always just do an internship abroad instead of doing your study terms abroad. Can engineering students do MBA, pre-med, or chartered accounting? Yeah, MBA, pre-med, and accounting, these are all things that I guess you can do after you graduate from your engineering degree. But that does sound like a lot of work. I don't know why you would want to do that even after you got an engineering degree. Because with the engineering degree, you can now get a job and start making money. I'd say only do those things if you see a positive ROI from them. I even thought about doing an MBA myself, but I'm still not sure if it's worth it or not. Because right now, I don't see any positive impact of doing one. Which engineering has the highest salary? The real answer is... It depends, but that's obviously not what you want to hear. So I'll give you a tier list. This isn't hard facts. This is just my opinion based on what I've seen over the last few years. I'll only look at the 10 most common engineering majors and I'll rank them from 1 to 10. Software, electrical, computer, mechanical, environmental or petroleum, civil, architectural, aerospace, chemical, and biomed. The highest is software engineering followed by electrical and computer. Then we have mechanical. These are usually the highest in terms of salary because of the influence of Silicon Valley companies and how much they pay their engineers. In the middle, we have environmental engineers, civil engineers, and aerospace engineering. They're stable, but usually they're not as sexy as the other ones, and tech companies don't really need these kind of positions. So for that reason, they don't really pay as much. Towards the end, we have chemical and biomedical engineering. I don't know why, but that's just what I've seen. Which engineering major is the easiest and hardest? Again, based on my personal experience, civil and architectural engineering is the easiest. This is just something that all engineering majors simultaneously agree on. Probably because these majors deal with stuff that don't move and they don't necessarily need to use F equals MA. There's so many jokes and memes about how civil is the easiest major. Anyways, that's followed by chemical, petroleum, and biomed. Oh, I know some of you will say, oh, but biomed engineering should be a lot higher because you're learning physics, chem, and bio, whereas all the other engineering majors, you're only doing physics and chem. Although that is true, the other majors are arguably harder because you're going into so much more detail within physics and chem, whereas in biomed, you don't go into that much detail because there is more stuff you're covering. And I'm not saying it's easy, it just might not be as hard as some of the others. So next, we have aerospace and mechanical engineering, followed by software, electrical, and computer. 
Courses like discrete math in these majors make them an absolute nightmare. Which engineering major has the least and most math? Starting with the least majors like petroleum, environmental, and geological. Then we have chem and biomedical. Then we have civil, aerospace, and mechanical. Finally, software, computer, and electrical engineering get the top spot. Electrical relies on a lot of differential equations when dealing with things like electromagnetism and complicated circuit analysis. Mechanical depends a lot on math too because of dynamics. Which engineering major has the most females? Here's the list. Architectural engineering, chem, biomed, environmental, civil, computer, electrical, software, and finally mechanical with the least girls. Yep, my major. And I know why. It's because when people hear mechanical, they think of dirty cars and oily engines. That's literally not what mechanical engineering is at all. We're not mechanics. Just like architects design buildings, we mechanical engineers design anything you touch, like cameras, your, your phone, or a mouse. So it's not all, you know, engines and dirty cars. Anyways, I know this tier list is pretty accurate because in a previous video, I asked girls what their experience was like with engineering and which majors had the most and least, and this is what they said. Civil engineering has the most girls. Biomedical or chemical engineering. Chemical engineering and biomedical engineering. I think industrial engineering. I definitely think architectural engineering. Chemical has the most girls. That was for which ones had the most girls, and when I asked them which ones had the least girls, they said this. Mechanical. Aerospace engineering. Software engineering and mechatronics engineering. Mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering. Mechanical. Yeah, they all collectively decided to roast my major. Which engineering major has the most jobs? That's tough, and again, very subjective, but based on what I've seen, this is how I would rank them. Starting with the least jobs, we have environmental, biomed, and chem. Then we have aerospace, civil, mechanical, electrical, computer, and software. That being said, they're all really close. Also, just because you studied biomed engineering, for example, doesn't mean you can't work as a mechanical engineer or an electrical engineer. You're usually not set in stone like that in the real world. You can somewhat easily move between them if you like. Also, some people can leave engineering entirely and then end up working as a project manager or even go and work in marketing. Sometimes those career paths have more work-life balance, but in general, to improve my work-life balance and just be more productive overall, it tends to take a bit of practice. So it's nice to have a place that you can go to or you can learn from on how to be more productive overall. There are so many websites out there, one of them being Skillshare who are sponsoring this part of the video. If you haven't heard, Skillshare is an online learning community that has a ton of courses on so many different topics, like project management, marketing, productivity, and time management. They're all pretty inspiring classes, especially if you want to learn a new skill towards your self-growth. Personally, for me, one of my favorite classes on their site is Productivity for Creators by Ali Abdal. I have my own systems that I like to use to manage my workflow and keep myself organized, but it is nice to see what other people do to see if there's something that they do that I would like to implement in my own work. I specifically like his concept of productive procrastination. So if you're interested in leveling up your skill or learn something new, then check out Skillshare's big library of classes. The first 1,000 people to use this link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Anyways, which engineering major should I choose? Obviously, I can't tell you which to choose because everyone is different, but let me still try to answer the question logically. We just ranked the 10 most popular engineering majors based on five different metrics. Salary, difficulty, math level, female density, and employability. So let's create a decision matrix that includes all these majors and all these metrics. Within each spectrum tier list that we made in the previous question, I'm gonna give each major a score from one to 10. For example, on the salary spectrum, biomed is the lowest, so we'll get a one, then chem will get a two, all the way up to software engineering, which will get a 10. I'll do the same thing for the spectrum of difficulty where comp eng gets a one, electrical gets a two, all the way to civil and architectural engineering that will get a nine and 10. After I do that for all the spectrums, I'll add all the numbers together and see which engineering major has the highest score. This is just what the data will give me. That being said, let me do the math, plug it in and see what happens. So I'm shocked architectural engineering had the highest score in aerospace engineering had the lowest score. That's what the data says that you should major in based on the five categories that we looked at. I think it's probably because using the category of math level was kind of repetitive because math level and difficulty are sort of the same thing. Also, I think female density 
shouldn't matter too much when you're deciding which engineering major to go with. I'm sure if you're a girl, then yeah, it matters because you want to be around other girls too, but I don't think it should be weighed the same as salary or difficulty level. So if I copy that table and take out math level and female density, let's see which one comes out on top. So with just salary, employability, and difficulty taken into consideration, this is what we get. We get software engineering in first place and biomed in last. And wow, surprisingly, architectural engineering is still up there at second. And my own major is fourth place now. I low-key kind of agree with it, to be honest. And I'll make sure to link the Excel spreadsheet that I created in the very description. You know, play around with the categories and the metrics to see which one matters more to you. For example, if let's say you only care about female density and salary, then put those categories in and see what comes out as the best major. Actually, I'm kind of curious, so let me try that right now. Okay, so wow, for first place, we still have architectural engineering. Then we have electrical, computer, software, and environmental tied for second, with aerospace unfortunately dead last. But hey, there you have it. Based on this data, it recommends you stick with either software or architectural engineering and avoid aerospace engineering. I'm a very logical person, so usually if I'm making a big decision, I like to incorporate decision matrices like this and look at the pros and cons and have a bunch of different metrics. So, you know, if that helps you, I'll put it again in the description, you can try it out for yourself. But I hope this answer sort of gave you an idea of how to go about deciding which major to choose. Will engineering be replaced by AI? Probably a lot of it will be, but I don't think it's a bad thing. We just need to learn to work with it. It's like when AutoCAD first came out. Before it, all the engineers would literally sit on these massive desks and draw stuff by hand. It was pretty difficult. When AutoCAD came out and it didn't end engineers, we just needed to learn how to use this new tool to make us better at our work. So just think of AI like a tool to help us you know, build our future better and faster. Will software engineering die? Probably not anytime soon. So if you're considering software engineering, you have absolutely nothing to worry about. I know AI can code now, but being a software engineer is way more than just being a code monkey. Who studies engineering? Anyone that enjoys torture. No, 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 I'm just kidding. Usually, in my opinion, I think there's three types. Type one are the ones that go into it because they're just naturally very good at math and physics, so engineering seemed like the logical fit. Type two are the people who just absolutely love love building things. Type three were the ones that were forced by their parents to do it. I think I was probably type one. Why engineering is better than medical? Obviously, I'm biased, but I think engineering was personally better for me because I'd only study four years or five years and then I was done. There's no more additional schooling after that. You're ready to work right away. Whereas in medicine, you need to do at least eight to 12 years of schooling until you're ready to work. Also, less university tuition for engineers is pretty cool too. Why is engineering so hard? I feel like in engineering, you learn eight years worth of content in just four because they condense all this information in such a short period of time. And I think that's what makes it so hard and tiring. Whereas in the medical field, for example, they'll teach you eight years worth of content in eight years. They don't necessarily condense it as much but after like your maybe second or third year of engineering you start to get used to the difficulty and how hard it is which actually in a weird way makes it less difficult how engineering students study i can make a whole video about this and i actually did quite a while ago and it's titled how i take notes as an engineering student but if i can answer this question concisely i'd say this in engineering you learn about so many different equations so to do well, you need to be able to read a word problem, determine which equation to use to solve that problem based on the givens and the unknowns of the question. That's about it. You just do this over and over and over and over again for so many different courses. The more problem sets and worksheets you do for practice, the better it'll become by determining which equation to use because you'll see patterns and you'll start to notice, oh, I remember using this equation in this particular question, so I can use it in this other question too, because they're somewhat similar. How are engineering marks calculated? I'm sure every course and university is a little bit different, but here's from my experience. Usually you'll have a midterm and final exam. The midterm will probably be worth 30% of your final grade, and the final exam will be worth around 40% of your final grade. The remaining 30% could be made up of quizzes, lab reports, and assignments that you have to do throughout the semester. Each probably worth anywhere between two to 10%, depending on how many of those assignments, quizzes, or labs you have to do. And there's usually no participation marks, so you could not show up to class, but just hand in your assignments, labs, and quizzes in on time, and show up to the midterm and final, and still do fine. Are engineering internships paid? Yeah, they usually are. Are engineering jobs stressful? No, usually not. Definitely way less stressful than your engineering classes. Unless you work for a company like Tesla, for example, who are known 
to make you grind. A Tesla job is usually a little bit stressful because they never tell you you need to work extra overtime, but it's just kind of expected that you're there from like 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. And if you want to send out, you might have to be there even longer, which in retrospect is easier and less stressful, obviously, than your university engineering classes. Other than that, for the most part, engineering jobs are usually pretty chill. You don't necessarily have to be staying up late at night to finish work or you don't have to be studying or working on the weekend. It's just eight hours a day and you have your evenings and your weekends completely free. Also, make Making money and not being a broke college student is nice and not as stressful. Are engineering jobs fun? I think that's a deep question because it really does depend on how you define fun. You see, fun is synonymous to pleasure and pleasure is the opposite of work. So by definition, if you work as an engineer, it can be pleasurable, therefore it's not fun. Maybe at the beginning it's sort of fun because it's new and exciting, but after a few months, you're really just doing it to get paid. So you can spend that money on things that you truly think is fun and actually enjoy, like hanging out with your significant other, exploring new hobbies, or going out with friends. Anyways, I hope this video brought you value. If it did, check out this video on my experience job hunting as a mechanical engineer, or check out that video to see a day in the life as an engineer. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.